Last summer, some of you approached me independently and started talking about the growing amount of people that are calling this their spiritual home. We always want to be a place where life happens. That's the dream of St. Peter since its inception, that life happens and we exist for the sake of the world, to point our resources out into the world, whether it's Haiti and Honduras or whether it's Evergreen Collective, all of these things, that we want to be a place for life to happen, and not just on a Sunday, but like throughout the week. And a lot of you aren't aware, like there's, there's a lot of things that happen throughout the week. Every single day here, a thriving preschool is growing by the numbers and there's waiting lists. There's multiple alcoholic anonymous groups. I walk in my neighborhood and people come up to me to say, I don't go to your church yet, but I love going to AA at St. Peter's Church. Thank you. And I'm like, fantastic. Amazing how God is on the move. Christ Church calls this place on Wednesdays home for their prayer meetings. A theater troupe meets here. Multiple Bible studies throughout the week, book clubs, small groups. The Sunday Circle, anyone been to that? That's packed out across across our property every single Sunday. Our formation school here called Immersion Disciple meets here. The Evergreen Collective Board meets here. The St. Peter's Board of Steward meets here. Staff meetings, girls groups, voice lessons, prayer appointments. And around the year, we host larger events that require setup and takedown and reset, such as the table and the fundraiser for the Lamb Institute and the oyster roast and the daddy-daughter dance and the student ministry, etc., etc., etc. And for all of that life, aside from the room that you are sitting in, we have two spaces. And do you know what they're called? Modular and shed. (laughs) And both have seen better days. We do have a barn that's depreciating by the hour. God bless our students that meet in there. So last summer, we had this Sunday where we had maxed out in our kids' room. One of them had 18 babies in the summer. And that same week, one of you approached me with this question. When are we going to develop the original plan? And so I started digging. And some of you have never seen this. This was the original dream of TJ and Reese Johnston. That where you're sitting was never designed to be the end. It was the beginning. Coming out after meeting in a school for years, that there was this dream. Right now where you're sitting, this is what has been done up to date. That the founders of this church had a dream a sort of St. Peter's that they one day had in mind, and they foresaw a day such as today. And and you can see where we are. That's the sanctuary at the bottom there, and then you can see the kids' space. And then it it would be continued on for more kids' space, and then you can see that close as it comes across the the sort of cloister here. You can see how that would be an additional community formation center. And then eventually we would build a kind of sanctuary that could house funerals and weddings and And then you see the Talbot track on the side here where we currently have our barn and there was no even thought about a greenhouse or an evergreen collective and a nonprofit there. And so this has been what's been built to date. And here's the reality. We are debt free. We have zero debt. And the amount of money that we release into the world and love is pretty incredible for our size church. So I said to this person who approached me with that question, I said, that's impossible. And they looked me dead in the eye and said, and I said, y'all, I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm not a builder. And so I began to wonder, is this even biblical? Like what we're talking about. I get tired of projects as monuments to human beings. That's not what I got into ministry for. And then I realized you have to go back to the beginning of the story. And what you find in Genesis 1, at the very beginning of God's creation, you find God looking at you and me and God blessing us and saying to us, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth and subdue it. In other words, from the very beginning, and then you see a city built at the end in Revelation, from the very beginning of Scripture in the garden, the invitation was to advance the culture of God's kingdom in all of creation. Jesus would say it like this, on earth as it is in heaven. The great theologian Abraham Kuyper once said this, that there is not a square inch in the whole domain of our human existence over which Christ, who is sovereign of all, does not cry, mine. Mine. Every square inch. Our church has been so blessed with these 13 acres. 
And do you have any idea how many square inches these 13 acres equal? Someone's fact-checking this right now. Someone's on chat GBT. Our church has been blessed with these 13 acres. And we intend, as the original founders of this community, we plan to maximize every square inch of this debt-free property for the glory of God and the mission of St. Peter's. We are a community following Jesus for the sake of the low country and beyond. For the sake of the low country and beyond. Our dream for this place, our commitment to advance our, pro- our property purposefully has a few ideas in mind. We, we, we want to be a sacred refuge. Some of you are like, oh my goodness, are we going to become a monstrosity? That's our concern too. And the answer to that is no. And we have provisions in our bylaws to, present, to prevent us from becoming something so big that it's no longer a people. We want to be a sacred refuge in a town growing busier and busier and noisier and noisier by the day, a place people can come onto campus and breathe. We want to be a spiritual home in a culture that's desperately lonely and needs a spiritual family, not a massive program, a home. These are the words that guide us. We want to be a local mission in a city that has needs that are plenty, but that are often hidden. So we believe that facilities exist simply to facilitate an organization's vision. And I would simply say that there is no effective organization in the world that does not require the proper facilities to facilitate its values in the long run. And we are so grateful for what we have, but we are also underserved for what God is calling us to do in the future. And so our stewards affirm that it is time to right-size our facilities to better facilitate our mission for the present. So we began exploring with city planners and architects to bring our original plan up to date and here's a kind of idea. It's all, it's all an idea. An idea of a spiritual home and a sacred refuge. That it could look something like this. You know, this would be a bird's eye mentality where it's not a monstrosity. It's just going to expand our footprint a little bit more to welcome a few more people in. Because Jesus cared about crowds. And it could look something like this. Here's a, a current site plan of what architects and Site planners have sort of envisioned, you can see the square there, that's what we currently have. And there are things around this that we think could be really helpful to our mission. And so here's where we are. This isn't, this isn't happening right now. This is saying we've been holding this, and it's time for us to invite you to hold it with us. Not as a way of saying, we're signing you up for something. As a way of saying, this is what we've been holding and considering. Would you consider holding with us? Because we've been on a journey, and we want you to be on a journey with us. That's all. That's what this conversation is about. The plan of this aims to cut down zero trees on our campus, right? We care about that. This would be the extension of our kids' space into a formation center, a community center, into a a sort of barn renovation perhaps someday. Here's the Evergreen Collective, which is already in process. Um, A potential columbarium here for me to be laid to rest if this project actually goes forward, by the way. (laughs) Here's a, here's a potential sanctuary that would max out at just over 500 because we don't, we want to get to a place where we plant rather than keep building and growing. We believe in planting churches. So that's our strategy. But we also know that this room we're sitting in was not intended to be an in sanctuary. So this is sort of what we are dreaming of. And this is the what that I'm asking you to hold with us. But I just want to briefly talk about the how This may be a two-year plan. This may be a 10-year plan. This may be a 20-year plan. We're surrendered. I just want you to see it. I just want you to know, especially if you're new or you've been with us for some time, there was an original plan of a dream that people had in mind around here, that you're entering into something that's been going on for a long time. So if we got to the end of this year and we had X amount, maybe we would just do this. Or if we had Y amount, maybe we would do that. 
Or if we had Z amount, maybe we would do it. We don't know. We, we are so surrendered in all of this without any manipulation and demands. There are some guardrails that we've put in place just so you feel safe about this. Because if you're like me, you start to feel a little claustrophobic in this. It's like, uh, 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 building project, I'm out. I came from that, whatever, whatever. There are just some things that we've said, are there ways that we can do this from a surrendered, restful stance? No pressure tactics. The answer is yes. The first is this, no debt. We refuse to take on debt. We will build to the extent that our people want to be on journey with us, period. That's our commitment to you. Every square inch is a cash project. And because of that, because we're not pulling a loan, our missions and our ministries will take zero hit whatsoever. We will continue on as we always have in mission and ministry. We are a mission-oriented church family, both globally and locally. But we also do believe this project when and if it gets completed, will expand our capacity to be increasingly missional and generous in the world, just like it did when we moved from the school to here. The second thing we would say as a guardrail is no deception. We invite your feedback. We're open-handed about this. We want you to talk to us. Next week, there'll be a poster in the lobby where you can kind of get up close to the site plan and see it for yourself and touch it. We'll have it sort of in, on the website so that you're not sort of like, what, what's happening and what's going on and what are we supposed to think about and pray about? We, we want you to be engaged in this. And we also want you to email us your feedback. Like, we care about that. So talk to us, even when you see us. We want to be in conversations with you. At the end of April, we're going to give a target number. And this is all designated funds. And so what that means is that you don't have to give to this if you don't choose to. You have to actually go out of your way to give to this project. It's a designated fund. Everything else goes to fund our mission and ministries as always. On May 21, we're going to have a town meeting. And that gives you time to process and to pray and to gather information. And then to come to that in May 21 and voice your longings and desires in a community space. The last thing I'll just say is that we have no demands. We refuse to apply pressure tactics and guilt. We will talk about this project, but it's not going to be the message of our church. Jesus is our message. His kingdom is our message. That will continue to be the message of St. Peter's Church. I just want to be clear that this is not a mega church. That is not our vision. This is not even close. But it will better help us facilitate our mission as a sacred refuge, as a spiritual home, as a local mission. And maybe you're thinking, that's impossible. And? kingdom is full of stories where the impossibility became a reality. And I know most of us just have like a little bit of barley, and I get it. But here's the thing. Among the thousands and thousands who are gathered before Jesus when he multiplied the bread, the bread do you really think that there was just one boy who brought lunch? I think he was just the only one willing to present it for the sake of the community. Would you be willing to hold this with us? And let's just see where God takes it. That's the invitation for us communally, just to hold something. That's all I'm asking this morning, and just see what God does. Now, personally, I'll say this. What are you holding this morning? It feels impossible. It feels insurmountable. It feels exhausting. This is the start of Holy Week. And if nothing else, it is that reminder that what begins as impossible can become a reality. And so we pray for you as we enter into baptism today that whatever you're facing, whatever waters you are under, whatever you feel like is so impossible right now, that there would be a fresh resurgence of hope, knowing that when we get to Easter morning next week, that we have a God that has been through everything emotionally and physically that we could possibly go through in life and emerges victorious on the other side. 
So whatever you're holding this morning, I just want to invite you into that John 6 reality that God has a history of making what is impossible reality. And so may we bring that before him. And I just want to pray over you and say, come Holy Spirit, come. I pray for this church, Lord, as we pray together this morning. I I pray for, um, for whatever emotionally someone is carrying in this room right now that just feels so insurmountable. I pray for whatever financial struggles are in this room, that there would be a sense of knowing that you give daily bread, that you care about us. God, for those vocationally, relationally, socially that feel alone, psychologically feel despair, I just pray that your resurrection power as we enter into this holy week would lead us to proclaim your victory even when we feel no peace. God, make us strong as a church to proclaim you as the center. And we believe you will come again. And so, Lord, build our faith this morning as we sing, as we sit, as we hold things together. Would you minister to us? Holy Spirit, you're the counselor that lives in us. So come and multiply whatever scarcity is within us this morning, that we would have a new found faith. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, I just want to invite you to rest. We're going to sing a song, and then we're going to participate in in seeing a sacrament. And let's just allow the Spirit to minister to you wherever you are. Let's sing into this this morning. Come, Holy Spirit.